Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a homemade hexic equation. We have x to the power 6 equals the quantity 5x minus 6 to the third power. And I'll be presenting two methods. And we're going to be solving for x obviously, right? Needless to say, let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to do what is more painful, expand the cube. If you expand a minus b to the third power, just like normal, I'm going to do it normal this time. You can also use a, a different identity. But let's just use the binomial, binomial theorem. 5x to the third minus 3 times 5x to the second multiplied by 6 plus 3 times 5x times 6 to the second power minus 6 to the third power. You don't have to put the 6 in parentheses. I just wanted to do that. And now let's go ahead and simplify this. This is 125x to the third. 5 squared is 25. 25 times 6 is 150. Multiply by 3, you're going to get negative 450x squared. 6 squared is 36 times 5 is 180. 3 times that is 540x minus 216. Okay, this is a polynomial equation, but let's put everything on the same side so we can make a, a hexic, right? But it's not a full hexic because we're missing some of the powers, which is fine, right? So negate everything, pretty much, and set it equal to zero. Great. This is too hexic, isn't it? Or maybe too hectic. Obviously, there's no hexic formula, which is really sad. There's not even a quintic formula. I know some people say, there is a quintic formula. We can express it not just in elementary, so on and so forth. Come on. You have to accept the fact. There is no quintic formula. If it exists, please share with us the formula. Give us some links. Give us some direction because I don't think the formula exists. Okay? Anyways, so solving this problem is obviously going to be very, very problematic. You could definitely use the rational root theorem. You can try to factor this. Uh, as you can see, some of these terms are missing. Like we don't have x to the fifth. We don't have x to the fourth. Is that an advantage? Sort of, maybe. That's going to that's gonna reduce the number of variables you have to solve for, but you still have to solve for those variables. Okay? So it's going to be quite difficult, maybe impossible. But with the rational theorem, obviously, you can try factors of 216. Good luck with that because it's 6 to the third power, which means 2 to the third, 3 to the third. And you know what that means? It has 4 times 4 by counting, 16 positive factors and 16 negative factors. So there's going to be a total of 32 candidates. Good luck with that, okay? But you can do it. And obviously, for these kinds of problems, like competition-level problems, uh, the answer is usually an integer, right? So you would expect to get something from here. But anyways, second method. There's a reason why we have the second method, right? Because you're probably thinking, there must be an easier way to do this problem. And you probably noticed, maybe you didn't, that's perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and take a look. If you look at this expression carefully, you're going to realize, first look at the outer powers. We have x to the 6 and something to the power 3. So 3 and 6, does that ring a bell? Yes, they have a common factor. Which means both of these can be written as perfect cubes. And that's just perfect. Okay, great, let's do it. So this is basically x squared cubed. And this is 5x minus 6 cubed. Since we have cubes on both sides, we can definitely cube root both sides and there's something nice about cube roots and of course this will kind of give us the real deal because when you cube there are three complex cube roots that's a different story we can talk about that but let's go go ahead and talk about this first the real deal so a real number has only one cube root and we can basically forget about the cube roots and cubes. This gives us x squared equals 5x minus 6. So in order for this hexic equation to be true in the real world, we have to have this. And this is much simpler, don't you think? I mean, come on, we downgraded from hexic, maybe upgraded, who knows, right? And this is much easier to solve. We have a formula. I mean, it exists, unlike the quintic formula, right? Anyway, so how do we solve it? Let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, I want to, and not only you can solve this with the quadratic formula, but you could also factor it. Isn't that beautiful? This is a factorable trinomial. Awesome. One of the good ones. 
So you're basically going to be looking for two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is negative 5. So those numbers are negative 2 and negative 3, which pretty much make up the factors along with x. And then from here we get x equals 2 and x equals 3 as solutions. But wait a minute, isn't this like hexic? And we only found two solutions. Why only two solutions? Because the other solutions are not real. I don't want to say complex because all the solutions are complex. Everything you know, right? Everything you know and everything you don't know. Anyways, complex numbers include real numbers. That's why I said the other solutions are not real. How do we find them? Is there a way to find them? Good question. Let's go ahead and take a look. So at this point, if you think about the cube root of x squared cubed and the cube root of 5x minus 6, right? Okay. I mean 5x minus 6 cubed of course. All right. So you're thinking, okay, we, we just did the, the op, uh, obvious and got the x squared with 5x minus 6, right? That was the principal or was it the principal cube root? I don't know. Probably. What if we kind of introduce something to this, like multiply both sides by 1 or maybe just one side by 1, which is going to be 1, but I want to write that 1 as the uh, complex version of 1, which is e to the power 2 pi and i. But since we took the cube root of both sides, I also have to raise it to the power 1 third. Make sense? So that kind of introduces new factors into our equation because 1 has 3 cube roots. Make sense? And what are they? For example, if n is equal to 0, uh, this is going to be this is going to be 1. We're not looking for that because multiplying by 1 in the real world is not going to make a difference. But what if n is equal to 1? Then you're going to get e to the power 2 pi i over 3, which is basically cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i times sine of 2 pi over 3. But what are those numbers, right? Well, cosine of 2 pi over 3, think about it. It's 120 degrees, right? 120 degrees is going to look like this. If you drop these perpendiculars, the cosine is going to be negative one half. So this is going to be negative one half. And this is going to be root three over two. That's a positive value. So in other words, we're basically going to be multiplying by this number. Now what happens when you multiply by that number? You took the cube roots, you're going to get something like this. X squared equals 5x minus 6 multiply by this. And of course, a lot of times people are going to use uh, call this omega because omega usually represents the one of the cube roots of uh, the one, the unity. And of course, it doesn't matter which one you use omega, by the way, because when you square omega, you'll get the other cube root, which is not one. Okay, makes sense? Either one is going to give you the same answer. And you can check out why. So, you can basically solve another quadratic equation, get the complex solutions that's left as an exercise for the reader. And please do not hate me for this. And we're going to finish up with the graph of these two functions, which intersect at two real points, right? The others are not real. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.